Okay, so um, we're going to make the barrel. And first of all, um, what you should do is always collect reference. So I just have a couple of things over here. So obviously, uh, this is just a, an image search of different barrels, and these are the kind of things we're looking at. Okay. Um, so get as much reference as you can. If you can get a side view, fine. To be honest, it's not that complex a shape, so uh, kind of eyeball a lot of it. Uh, I would recommend you download these, save them to a folder, and have them as a reference. Also, I found some sizes for these. Um, the these barrels are based in gallons, uh, so there's different ones. The standard UK one for beer, I'm looking at is this 30 gallon one, uh, and this just gives us the size of this. Um, so our barrel height, we have the head diameter, which is this section here. We have the bilge diameter, which is the thickest part in the middle. And what I've done is that I've converted all those to centimeters. I'm gonna be working in centimeters in, in Maya. Okay, and I've gone to the nearest um, set to beta, so rather than 54.5592, we've gone to 55, etc, etc. Okay, so that's always the first thing you should do. Get plenty of reference and get the sizes. So in Maya, I'm just going to change this over to my standard modeling. Just going to get rid of the outliner. Okay, um, we could also, if we want to get rid of the uh, channel box, um, but that, that should be fine for now. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to go into the inputs for the cylinder and let's set this up. So I've got a height of, got this written down, 80 centimeters. And my, rea uh, my radius is 22.5. Okay, just press F to focus in on that. And what I'll also do is I'm just going to set this up um, so that this is sitting on the grid. So I'm going to hold down D to use a pivot point and uh, V here to snap to vertices. So that's our snaps up here. I'm going to middle mouse drag on just the uh, y axis and drag that down to this point down here and that's going to put the pivot point at the bottom and then pressing X down I can middle mouse drag on this and just drag it up to snap it to that grid line okay now just as a point of reference uh, for the thickest part you don't have to do this as I say you could eyeball this uh, but what I'm going to do is just create another cylinder this one I'm going to have as 80 as well. This is going to be the thickest. This is a bull diameter, so 27.5. Let me just do this again. DV, middle mouse drag, and then just X and snap that up. And over here in my layers, uh, still in my channel box, I'm going to go through layers. I'm going to create from selected, or I believe we can click this one as well. I think it's that one there. Yep. And then I'm going to template this. So if I just click on this box over here, so we get the T, that just templates it. So it shows it in wireframe, um, but this locks us. So I can't actually click it or move it. So I'm going to grab this and let's start working on this barrel. I'm going to leave this as the base um, 20 subdivision axes. That should be fine for this. I'm just looking at this, this try count right now. Um, and that's absolutely fine at 80. Uh, we're going to obviously increase that. So just to get the basic shape, I'm just going to go into mesh, uh, into edit mesh, sorry, mesh tools. I'm going to insert edge loop. I'm going to click on the options for this. Uh, number of edge loops, I want three. Let's just click on this and grab that. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to go in, double click on this first edge. Uh, I'm going to my scale tool, R, and I'm going to scale this up. I'm going to use, rather than using the uh, middle, another way to do this. And I, I could do it on this one, actually. Um, but I'll show you a little trick with the other. So I'm just going to scale this out. Okay. What I can 
can do with this is just scale it out. Oops. Scale it out until it's just showing. So something like that. Okay. Uh, so I can switch that off now. Good. Double click and then shift to double click on this. So if I was resizing these, uh, what you find is they're going to go up vertically as well, which you don't really want on that. So if I press down control and basically I want to scale on these two axes. So if I press control and scale on this, the Y axis, it will ignore the Y axis and just scale on the other two. So it's a way of um, constraining uh, that can be done with motion or scale or rotation, uh, sorry, transforms or, or scale of rotation. So that's just control held down over the axes that you don't want to actually affect. So there we've got our barrel shape. Uh, we're looking at 200 tries here. Still need to increase that a little bit. But what I'll first do um, is I'm going to offset these to give uh, give a little bit of a lip. Um, if I just bring over, let's just drag this over. So we've got a little bit of an indentation in there. Uh, we can't get away with that. We're using a normal map for that. That would be too deep. Um, so I'm going to actually model that in. So I'm going to go into my face selection. And a quick way of grabbing these, if I press tab and hold tab down, I can just paint through, grab those. I'm going to do the same with this. With tab press down. That's a really useful tool, just holding tab down. Uh, it doesn't paint the surfaces behind as well. Let's grab that. Let's do a control E, or we could go into the modeling toolkit and do an extrude as well. I'm going to do an offset on this to get the thickness of these planks. Press G to repeat the last tool. And then I'm just going to set the thickness just down. Okay, yeah, something like that. So we're looking at 360 on there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go in and just. So on these, um, I'm just going to make the planks across. Uh, this is a trick that you sometimes see, well, not, not a trick, just something that you see, sometimes see people do in terms of um, getting rid of the pole at the middle of this, which can cause problems in shading. It could also reduce the poly count a little bit as well. So I'm going to keep these two edges, but what I'm going to do is get rid of the, ed the, the rest of the edges on this, the top and bottom. So again, I'm just going to use this tab tool. I'm just going to paint it through. So grab that one. And then just grab those. And I'm going to do a control and backspace. Look at these, same thing, tab. Tab. Control and backspace. Uh, just get into the habit of using a control backspace just simply because it gets rid of any verts that we may not need in there. Um, it, actually, the, all the verts that are that are within there we actually need and they'll remain. Um, but it's, it's just a good habit to get into. So I'm then going to use uh, the multi-cut. I like using the shortcut for that, which is control shift and X. I'm going to recut through these because right now we've got a obvious end gone. So as I'm taking these across, just going from vert to vert and then press an enter. And then just let's try it here. We could also delete this face and bridge as well. Okay. The same on the bottom.
just be careful that you are clicking over the verts and you will see that they go red otherwise you're going to be creating a cut into another edge and that's going to have a round invert in there which is also going to be creating an end on okay that could also speed that workflow up as well. I could actually just do the top and delete the bottom and then mirror that round, um, which is another way to work. I'll leave that there. It's not taking too long though. So they've got a base barrel. Okay. Uh, we can facet these. These this these are all smoothed out right now. If I just grab I'm just shift double clicking on these. Grab all of those. Because these are all individual planks, we don't have to have them smooth together. Um, so I'm going to go into my, my mesh display and harden hedge. And then we'll get this faceted look. Okay. So I could leave it at that. It depends on the shape that you want to keep with this. Um, I may just go a little smoother on this. So actually what I may do is just Shift double click on these edges and I'm just going to bevel those out actually. Uh, let's just. Actually, I think 0.5 was fine. And that's just going to smooth the silhouette out of this. Just look at that, it's just a little bit smoother. Um, it's still only 478 tries, which isn't too big to be honest. Okay. So there I have my uh, low poly barrel. So I'm going to name this, just going to go into my outliner. I'm going to call this barrel and underscore a low. And I'm going to be doing a high poly version of this. Uh, so what I will do just to organize all of these things, I'm just going to do another layer from selected. Double click on this layer. Um, we can't have spaces in these names. Let's call this low poly. Just save that. I'm just going to name this one. I'll just call it reference for now. And save that. Okay. Oh, and that faceting's gone, so it's going to go through. If you're finding that this extrude gets in the way, if you just press Q, which is the select rather than the move and select, or rather select and move, um, it just means that that extrude isn't getting in the way. You might find it does every so often. So let's go to mesh display and let's harden the edge. So again, we'll get that, that faceted look into these individual planks. I'm just going to get rid of the history on here, so edit, delete by type, history, and I'm also going to zero out any of these uh, modifiers, so I'm just going to go in and freeze transforms. And I could leave that at that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll leave the UVs for now, I'll go back and do the UVs later, um, but I'll leave that barrel as it is, so let's just make sure we do a file. And let's save the scene as, and I'm going to call this barrel01. Continue. So that's the low poly version of that. Okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll finish here, and then in the next tutorial, I'll go through and make a high poly version of this.